Let's take a look at the basic routing, and then we'll take a look at HSRP and making it work and why. We have a PC. It's a beautiful PC right here. Its IP address is 1.0.0.25. Now, to make it really convenient, I simply made a router with a PC prompt. It's really just a router acting as a client. Now, that router, how would we verify its IP address? With the show IP interface brief, that'd be an easy way. How do we verify what the mask is? We could do a show run or we do a show IP interface for FA 0 slash 0. And it would tell us that sure enough, we've got the IP address of 10025 and it has a proper 24 bit mask. So if this device wants to communicate outside of this local 1.00 network, it's going to have to use a default gateway. How do we know if it has one? Well, let's just take a look. We'll do a show IP route. That'll tell us the whole story and it says, We've got no routes except for the directly connected 100 network. So just to verify that our network operates before we implement HSRP, let's give this device a default gateway. We'll say IP route at a default route pointing over to, and let's just pick R1, and we'll use 1.001 as the next hop. There we go. So now we have a default route. And if we need to forward packets, for example, over here to 3.003, we're going to use our default gateway. The frame will be forwarded over to the layer 2 address of R1. He'll resolve that via ARP and we'll be on our way. In fact, let's just do a quick check to a show ARP. And right now, this router only knows about its own IP address and its own layer 2 address. That's it. If we try to ping outside of our local network, it'll go ahead and resolve our default gateway's layer 2 address, forward the frame to the router one, and then router one would forward onto its final destination. So let's do a quick ping as a test. So there's our ping. And assuming R3 has a route back over to the one network, that looks good. Now if we do a show ARP, you'll notice that we have resolved 1001, and his MAC address is all ones. Now, it's not likely you're going to get all ones for a real MAC address, but I hard-coded that on R1. So that way, when you see the MAC address of 0011.1111, you'll know that that's the MAC address of R1's FA00 interface. So great. The default gateway works. But let me show you something magical. Let's do a ping of 3.0.0.3, and let's repeat it 10,000 times. So while that's going, we'll make a road trip over to R1, and we'll simply go into interface FA0 slash 0. That's this guy right here. I'll point to him, and we'll shut it down. Now, you can imagine what PC1 is going to do when he can't forward traffic. Now, all the ping requests are timing out. So whatever shall we do? We want to have fault tolerance when possible for our customers. And that is exactly what HSRP brings to the table. Hot standby router protocol is the ability to have two routers that are both on the same segment here, the VLAN 2, both support a virtual IP address. So we could say, Mr. R1 and Mr. R2, why don't you guys support this virtual IP address of 1005, some unused address on the subnet, and then have the PC use 1005 as the default gateway. Then if R1 goes belly up, R2 can take over. Or if 2 goes belly up and it's active, R1 can take over. That's what the hot standby router protocol is all about. So let's stop this ping, and we'll do the control shift 6 to stop it. And let's go back to R1, bring up the interface with the no shutdown. And as that is coming up, let's go ahead and set up HSRP between R1 and R2. It's so easy to do. First, we identify an IP address that we want to use that will be the default gateway for all the clients on this 100 network. We're going to use 1005 because it's in our plan to do so. So we'll simply go to R1 and say, Dear Mr. R1, on this interface, FA00, here's what we want you to do. We want you to play a game called Hot Standby Routing Router Protocol. The way you turn it on is standby, give it a number. If you don't put a number, it'll use zero by default. But I'm going to go ahead and use standby one. And then I'm going to say the IP address I want you to use is 1.0.0.5. Now, right now, R1 is saying, oh, let me see if there's anybody else playing the hot standby router game. And maybe somebody else is already active for that IP address on this segment. So it's doing a few messages that are going out, and it's looking to see if there's anybody out there that's listening. And if there's nobody there, he's going to go active, and he will be the active router for HSRP on this segment. There he goes. So take a look at this. 
If we did a do show ARP on R1, take a look on FA00. We've got this MAC address that he is supporting. So he is supporting the IP address of 1005, and the MAC address is the reserved MAC address for Cisco, and 01 at the very end represents group number one. And if we did a show standby like this, it would give us all the defaults. All we did was that one line, just standby IP, and then we specified our standby one IP 1005. That's all we did. And what we have is we have the active routers local because he didn't see anybody else on the network. He says the standby router is unknown, meaning he hasn't seen messages from anybody else indicating that anybody else is also running HSRP. So pretty much he's all on his own at the moment. His priority is 100, and that means that's the default. So if you have two routers and they're duking it out for who gets to be the active router and support the virtual IP address, the one with the highest priority when they're, if they both come up at exactly the same time, the one with the highest priority is going to win. And there's the default name for this HSRP group. And there's that MAC address again as well. So now we've got this IP address of 1005. Let's verify that it works. We'll go back to our client right here and let's change our default route. So I'm gonna take out this one and I'm gonna put the new one in that says, I wanna use 1005 as my new default gateway. So now as I ping 3.0.0.3, it's going to ARP for the layer 2 address of 1005. And if we do a show ARP here, there it is. So there's our ARP resolution right there for the HSRP address. So you'll notice that matches the MAC address that's being supported by R1. Now it's not fault tolerant yet because... If R1 goes down, we're still in trouble. So let's bring R2 into the party with that same command. And R2 will go into interface config for FA0 slash zero, which is right here. I'll put my mouse on it. And we'll say standby one IP is gonna be 1.0.0.5. So and here's what's happening in the background with R2. R2 is now listening to HSRP messages sending out messages telling everybody else that he's there and they're they're sending it to a multicast address of 224.0.0.2 which hsrp devices are listening on he's going to see that r1's active and he'll simply say okay great you're active i'll be standby in case something bad happens to you and there you have it so this is r2 now acting in standby mode so r1's active and r2 standby if we do a show standby It'll give us the whole story right here. It'll say the virtual IP address we're supporting is 1005. So our clients on that subnet can use that as a default gateway. There's the MAC address that's being used for this group. The hello time is every three seconds. We're sending out hello messages. If we haven't seen a neighbor in 10 seconds, we're going to consider them dead. And then we're going also the active router is 10, 1001, which is R1. And standby router is local. This is R2 saying, I realize that I'm not the top dog. I'm in standby mode. So let's test this out again. If we go up to the host again, and we do a ping, that ping again of 10,000. Now as we ping, let's go up to R1 and take out this interface. Well, we'll just shut it down. How about that? Interface FA00. Shut. Now it's shut down. Let's take a look at what host A is going to do. This is our PC. We've missed a few pings. And then it picks up again. So that was the convergence time it took for R2 to figure out that it needed to go active and pick it up. So in the background, PC1 still has the same resolution for that layer 2 address. We do a show ARP. You'll notice that it still thinks that the IP address of 1005 is still at this MAC address. However, in the background, that MAC address is now on the port that connects over to R2. So the PC is basically blind to the fact that it's a different default gateway who's supporting this virtual IP address, but that's how it operates. It's fantastic. Well, what else can we talk about here? Check this out. What if, let's bring R1 back up. Let me show you something amazing. If we go back to R1 and say no shut, so that interface is coming back up. We'll do a, a show standby as well. So there's my OSPF being happy, happy. I'm just going to wait till this guy gives us a message. It should take less than 10 seconds. 
So show standby, once it tells us that it's in standby mode, you notice R1 didn't come back and say, hey, I'm taking over. It came up, this interface did, and it said, oh, I see these messages that somebody else is already active. I'm not going to take over. So it says, okay, I'm local. The other guy is active. So that's right, right here. So the other R2 is 1002 and it's active. So let's take a look at the real world. What if we wanted R1 to automatically be king of the hill and be active? How do we force that? What we could do is simply go into interface configuration mode and say standby one priority and just give him a higher priority than his buddy. Now, HSRP is courteous by default. What do you mean, Keith, it's courteous? Well, if you'll notice, R1, if we do a show standby, he has a higher priority now. <laughs> if I could just type show standby, there we go. So he says the standby router is local. That's me, I'm local. My priority is 101. The other router is the active router. His priority is 100, but I'm not taking it over because I don't want to upset the Apple cart. You know, the switch has to memorize where the layer two addresses live and everything else. I'm just going to let R2 do his job until I don't hear from him anymore, and then I'll take over. Well, there's a command that we can issue that will tell R1 to go ahead and do a coup, like a coup d'etat where there's an overthrow or a takeover. And that, that command is called preempt. In interface configuration mode, FA00, which is the segment we're talking about right here, this network, this VLAN, if we say standby one preempt like that, that tells R1, hey, you know what? You go ahead and take it over if your priority is better than the current active routers. Doesn't matter if they've already been up or anything else, you go ahead and take it over. And that's what the preempt command does. So now R1 is our active router. So the PC, he's happy, he doesn't care, he can, ping and he's can forward packets across the network. I'll do a control shift six and break that. And he can forward no problem. And it doesn't matter. Our goal is to provide fault tolerance. But there's one more problem that is real. What if this interface fails on R1? R1's our current active router, but if we want to get off this local segment and R1's interface here dies, Basically, R1 and R2 are still going to have R1 be the active router because his priority is higher and the preempt command is on. So what do we do? The other option we have, which is really cool, is we can track this interface. We can tell R1, dear Mr. R1, if this interface, which is not running HSRP, if that goes down, I want you to subtract some points from your current priority with HSRP. Let's go ahead and tell it to do that right now. It's really simple. We're going to go into the interface where HSRP is configured. All the configuration is done on this interface. And we'll simply say standby, one, and let's take a look at our options. This option right here for tracking is what we're going to use. We're going to say track. We'll say I want you to track the status of FA0 slash 1. And if that interface goes down, I want you to go ahead and remove, let's say five points. So if we do a do show standby now, take a look. It says that my current priority is 101, and I'm also tracking FA0 slash one. The current state is up, but if it wasn't up, I would decrement five points. So now if this interface fails or goes down, R1's gonna lose five points, which would take him from, where is he at? He's currently at 101, that would take him to 96. And the other critical thing that we need to be aware of is that that won't be enough for R2 to take over. Why, Keith? 96 is lower than 100, but R2 doesn't have preempt set. So what we'd want to do is tell R2 to preempt so that if R1 does dip in his value, his priority, then R2 can preempt and take it over. So on R2, let's do exactly that. We'll go to this interface. And we'll simply say standby one preempt so now he's ready to take it over in the event that the r1 dips in value so let's test this out let's go back to host a and let's go ahead and do some pings so on r1 we'll do a ping of 3.0.0.3 repeat it 10,000 times currently r1 is active so on r1 we're going to go into interface fa0 slash one not this interface but the tracked one and we're going to do a shut. And when we shut that down, he goes from active 
he goes to standby. And if we take a look at R2, R2 is going to active. And if we take a look at the PC, we just lost a teeny little bit there while they made that transition. Now let's take a look at the, op the output of R1. Back on R1. If, and I'm going to stop that ping as well. We've proved our point. Let's do a control shift six there. And on R1, check this out. If we do a show standby now on R1, he's going to say, well, my configured priority is 101, but it's currently at 96. And here's the explanation for why. I'm tracking interface FA01, which is my path off that local network, and it's currently down. And as a result, I'm decrementing at five. And there was a coup that was taken over from, so R2 said, hey, my priority is 100, yours is 96. I'm going to go ahead and take it over. So from the customer's point of view, we've had fault tolerance all the way across. One other thing I'd like to share with you is a packet capture of what the actual HSRP messages look like. So let's go back up to R1. We'll do a no shut on FA01. That should bring his priority back up. He should take over the network and say, great, I'm back to active status. And also OSPF is renegotiating its neighborships across that interface as well. So right now I've ca I'm capturing traffic that's going between R1 and R2 on this segment. And let's just trigger a failure again. And we'll do it by bringing down FA01 again. As a reminder, if we do a do show standby, it's showing us that the current router is the local one. The current active router is R1. That's where we're issuing this command. The standby router is at 1.0.0.2. And our priority is currently 101. And it's configured as 101 because our other tracked interface is up. So let's go ahead and interface FA0 slash 1 while our packet tracer is running. We'll say shutdown. And effectively, R2 is now king of the hill and pings still work. In fact, if this happened in the middle of, like, say, a web session, between the PC and R3 or some kind of TCP session, there might be a little hiccup for a moment, but the session wouldn't be broken because everything, all the connectivity is restored so quickly. So let's go take a look at our packet capture of just what occurred and we'll also verify that we still have our connectivity. So our connectivity is still good to go. So here's the play-by-play. -play. R1 was the active router. We disabled FA0 slash 1 that lowered his priority. R2 saw that his priority is higher and took it over. So behind the scenes, we had hello messages going out every three seconds. So here's a, this is from 1001 before it got taken over, saying I'm active. That's 1002 saying I'm standby. And if you take a look, it has their states. It also has the group and the virtual IP address that they're supporting. And that goes back and forth every three seconds. Then we have some OSPF messages for routing that came in. Those come in every 10 seconds. So as we scroll down, it gets a little more interesting right about here. There we go. So we have taken down R1's FA0 slash 1 interface. His priority drops to 96. So as he's advertising, 10.001, he's saying, hey, my priority is 96. HSRP on R2 says, wow, wait a sec. My priority is higher, realizes that and sends a coup message, like coup d'etat, I want to take it over. And R1 is programmed to allow that to happen. So the coup message is basically R2 saying, I'm going to take over the responsibilities for the 1005 and the special layer to address associated with it. Now check this out. He's now advertising that he's the king of the hill, that he is the active router for this HSRP group. And look what he's going to do. He's going to send out a gratuitous ARP. Now, a gratuitous ARP is just like an ARP response, but nobody asks for it. Now, why would he do that? Because in a layer two switched environment, check it out. How do layer two devices make forwarding decisions? They have learned where a layer two address lives, what port it's on. So R1 is connected to one port and R2 is connected to a different port on the switch. So the gratuitous ARP is being sent. Take a look at the source MAC address. The source MAC address is that special reserved HSRP group one address, layer two address. So he sends that out. And as a result, the switches in our environment are going to identify, oh, that MAC address now lives on the port that's connected to switch to R2. We're also going to do that to update anybody's 
layer two ARP caches. So PCs on the network and other devices that might have had that change, the gratuitous ARP is going to refresh the layer three, layer two mapping to make sure it's correctly set up. Because there is an option with HSRP where we can tell R1 and R2 to use their burned in address and that would make this gratuitous ARP even all that more important. So that's the play-by-play. -play. And then as we take a look at the other hello uh, the other um, hello messages, we've got the active is coming from 1002, and the standby is R1. At layer 4, we're using UDP, User Datagram Protocol. And the well-known port for HSRP is 1985. Now, normally with protocols like TCP and UDP, we have a source port that's some random high numbered port that we use to establish a session or to build a connection. With HSRP, we're gonna use 1985 as the source and destination port for these updates. At layer two, where are we sending these? Well, the destination address is the multicast address of 224.0.0.2. A switch, if it's not configured to do anything, is gonna consider that multicast because that converts actually to a layer two address, which is right here. And the switch is simply gonna forward that to everybody. 224.0.0.2 could be used by other things as well. The switch is gonna forward that to all devices on that VLAN by default. And then the HSRP configured devices will actually say, oh, that might have meaning for me. And they'll take a look at the packet. And then once they look at the packet, they'll continue to de-encapsulate it look at the UDP information, and they'll say, oh, yep, I'm running HSRP 1985, I'm listening on that port, and then they'll open up the actual contents. This would be the layers five, six, and seven content for HSRP, and then they would work on it based on how they're configured to operate with HSRP.